Here we go, starting with our drawing. I've got just a big sketchbook here. This is one of the most valuable things you'll have. I'm not a total stickler for a perfect drawing. The great thing about painting is nobody ever sees the resource with the painting, unless you show it to them. And I always recommend you don't. I mean, sometimes people like to do it because it's kind of like showy-offy, right? Look at how good I am. I made it look just like the photograph. Don't do it because guaranteed somebody's going to be like totally jealous of you and find something that looks totally wrong. And then that's all you... I have this little um, door that I took uh, a photograph of in Stratford-upon-Avon in England. So vanishing points just help give you that sense of scale and, and um, depth on a flat surface. And... When I was in school, you know, we had to learn, okay, you put a dot here and you put a dot here and then everything kind of goes off those dots and you draw lines to make them merge. The problem with that, it, it's a great system, but the problem with it is, is A, it, it all depends on where those vanishing points are and they're not out there for you to see. So you don't know where to put them. You have to kind of backwards, you know, figure it out and you're probably going to get it wrong. And B, it can make your painting look really, really stiff. So here's what I'm doing here. Now, what you're gonna see is probably just a bunch of little ticks, right? I wasn't worrying about the door and I wasn't worrying about the width of anything. What I was doing is I was looking at my picture and I was saying, now, if the door is this high from my finger to the top of that dowel, okay? So if my door is roughly this high, now how high are my stairs in relation to the door? They're just over halfway the height of the door. So I drew a door, I figured out where the halfway point of the door was, I slid it down and I made it up. Now there's my relative heights, then I did the same thing with the widths. I took my picture and again I went how wide is my door from blue to blue? Measured it, okay. So now how wide are my stairs down below? Well they're you know a little bit wider, maybe maybe half, half the distance of the door added on. To the width of the door so roughly you know that wide there and you can go from wall to wall you could go, you can choose what it is that you're relating to each other I'm just making it up whatever works for me do I want to do the stairs or do I want to go from wall to wall instead the both sides of the wall from the right side of the door to the window and the left side of the door to the edge of the wall are the same width so Heck, I could just put those ticks in instead and then figure out the stairs from there since they come down to about the same place, roughly. So that's what I did. There's the width of my door. It's about, it's, it's a little more than half the height of the door. So it's about the same width as the height of the stairs, really. So I could just take that same width and just turn it sideways and plop it in there. And then figured out how wide to the wall edge, how wide to the window, and then however many ticks as you wanted to. Once I got those ticks in, then it's just a matter of lining it up, creating a rectangle, you know, putting in the lines of the side of the wall, the side of the wall here. So again, my first tick marks, if I'm gonna go vertically, I have the wall edge there, so that's this line here. I have the width of the door, that's this line right here. I have the right side of the door, and then I have this wall line. And then I added another corner of the window. So just trying to get those relative, so relative widths. Same thing with the heights. That was the height of my door right there. Just a little over halfway. The height of the door is the height of the stairs. Really small little overhang. Kind of roughly placed in where all these things were gonna line up in relation to the top of the door how far down it went to the door, but I wasn't taking a ruler and measuring it exactly. And I wasn't using a grid pattern to make it really precise. I was just trying to get relative distances in a very simplistic way. Now there are angles in here, so that's where this dowel can come in handy as well. So for example, these staircases, the front part of the step goes straight up and down on the sides, but the front part of the step gets wider towards you and it's skinnier in the back, so there's gonna be an angle on the right and the left. What I do is I'll take my, my photograph, I'll put it right near my drawing, and if I'm working from life, plein air, then what I have to do is look at my subject matter, hold up my dowel, keep my arm steady, move my whole body to my easel, and draw my line. Okay, so I have to go like this. I'm a mo I'm, I can just go in and get my pencil. I can say, okay, that's top stairway. The angle here on this top step is something like that. And I just kind of slide it down and then just doop, draw it in. 
Do the same thing on that next step. What's that angle? What's the angle here on the top of that wall? It's almost horizontal. Line it up, draw the line. Same thing up here on this window. I line this up with the drawing. And then just kind of move this over and just draw the line. Way easier than trying to find vanishing points because it's just relating what I see. Okay, so once you get your drawing done, for example, I got almost all the elements in here. This is not a drawing for drawing's sake. And all I want to do when I'm doing a picture for a painting, like the difference between these two, for example, something like this where I have a lot of detail and I have a lot of shading, or something like this. It's almost like a cartoon. This could be in a coloring book. So once I get my drawing in, then what I want to do is I want to transfer it, if I'm transferring. This is transfer paper. This is old fashioned carbon paper. Yeah, where do you get that from? Any art supply store will have it. Oh, yeah. it. Yep, they do. And just ask, it's usually in the drafting materials. Um, you can order it online. It's just the most handy thing ever because what you can do, and you can use it over and over and over again. The darker side is the part that transfers. The lighter side is the part that doesn't. So let's say I want to transfer this drawing to this piece of paper underneath, right? I'm sure most of you, other than, you know, maybe you have never done this before. I don't know. This is like an old school thing. But um, what I'll do is I'll take a colored pencil because then I can see where I've already transferred and where I haven't. And I just start going over, and I'll usually tape down one side. I just start overlapping my drawing. Do, do, do. I'm not gonna do this whole thing. And it just transfers it. So then you could just transfer it to your canvas and then you're off to the races.